Hi, this is Jeremy Goodrich, owner of Shine Insurance Agency and creator of Make Insurance Simple, where we're trying to change the way you feel about insurance by helping you to understand it, whether you purchase your insurance policy from us or not. This video is all about homeowners claims. So whether you're experiencing one right now or you just want to be prepared for if one happens, I'm going to walk you through the important parts of what you can do to make your homeowners claim as simple as possible. So let's dig right in. What you're going to learn in this video is pretty simple. We're going to start with uh, property versus liability, two different kinds of coverage that exist on your homeowner's policy. Then we're going to talk about what to do right when a claim happens, your first decisions, the first things to do. We'll talk about a super important person in the process, the claim adjuster. And finally, I'll kind of walk through how a claim goes and you can see the different parts of it and, and who does what and all those kinds of things. Uh, first off, a tiny disclaimer. Uh, this video is meant to provide very very general advice. I am in no way confirming details about your specific insurance policies because I don't have them in front of me. Those conversations should happen between you and your insurance advisor. So pretty obvious, but just wanted to throw that out right at the beginning. Okay, let's talk first about property versus liability, some basic insurance education here. Property is just, uh, property coverage is when bad things happen to your stuff. In a homeowner scenario, that's your house, your stuff inside your house, your other structures, your shed, your detached garage, your pool, any of those kinds of things. That is your stuff, and that is property coverage. Liability coverage is when bad things happen to other people because of you. So something bad happened to somebody, they got hurt or whatever, that is your liability, and that's why you have liability coverage on your auto policy and your homeowner's policy, and if you're a business owner, you have general liability coverage as well. This is coverage for bad, when bad things happen to other people because of you. Uh, so I want to stop right now, and I just want to say, if you want to learn about liability claims, please check out the homeowner's liability claims video on our YouTube channel. And you can click right here uh, to go watch that video right now. I didn't want to make this video too long. And so the rest of this video is all about property coverage, coverage for bad things that happen to your stuff. But I do have a video about liability coverage, bad things that happen to other people because of you. And you can watch that right there. All right. So you've had a claim happen. Maybe you had a fire. Maybe a tornado came through. Maybe you've had water damage, a burst pipe. Those are the most common ones, but there's lots of different kinds of claims. Something bad has happened at your house. What's the first thing to do? Well, I'm going to start with the no-brainer. You know, call 911. If your house is on fire or something like that, that's not the time to worry about your insurance coverage. You know, we want to make sure that we mitigate the damage and that we get the professionals in to take care of it. So you're going to call 911, and that's the first thing you're going to do. If it is safe, stop further damage. So the, the best example of this is you should know where your water shutoff valve is in your house. Oftentimes water claims become much, much worse because someone didn't know how to turn off the water in their house. And so it continued to you know pour out of the burst pipe or whatever and cause lots, lots more damage. So if it's safe, go ahead and stop further damage. That could be turning off the main water pipe. In a fire situation, that could be getting your fire extinguisher and attempting to put the fire out. Okay, so call 911 at the very beginning, obviously, and then if it's safe, go ahead and stop further damage with all those things I just said. And finally, make sure you document everything. So take pictures, take videos, make sure to have evidence of what happened in the scenario. Because the claim adjuster that I'm about to talk about is going to ask for evidence, and the more you have, the better off you're going to be throughout the claims process. Okay, so uh, now you're going to call a remediation specialist. And this is someone who is going to clean up the damage a fire and water damage service specialist. You probably have one if in your town. If you don't, you have one in the next closest larger town. And you're going to hire these folks to clean up the mess. Uh, but I want to point out right now a rookie mistake, something that people do all the time, and it, it totally makes the process so much worse, and that is hiring the wrong restoration service. These folks not only come in and clean up your house, but oftentimes they are going to become the general contractor who helps to rebuild your house as well or re, you know, fix the damage that happened. So you're going to have a relationship oftentimes with these restoration folks from the very beginning 
to the very end of your claim experience. And they're going to be doing the work. And so if you hire the wrong folks, it really, really creates a problem. What I suggest is to ask your insurance agent who they have used before. Insurance agents have relationships with restoration folks and they know who's good and who's not. If you don't have an insurance agent, go out to Yelp, go out to you know whatever reference spaces out on the web are. Make sure that the people you hire have positive reviews from other local folks in your area. If somebody showed up and knocked on your door and uh, you never heard of them before and they don't have any reviews online, that's a red flag and create, could create a serious problem for your process. So definitely hire the right restoration folks based on referrals. Okay. So when everything is settled and you know it's not an emergency anymore, it's time to call your insurance company. Maybe that's your insurance agent or maybe that's your insurance company itself. And uh, you're going to make a phone call to them and tell them about the claim. Pretty simple, right? Um, and when you call in, you're going to get kind of a general person, someone who doesn't necessarily have expertise in the claims process and may not be able to answer a whole bunch of questions for you, um, but they'll be collecting information from you. The information you want back from them is, is fairly simple. You want a claim number. This is going to drive a lot of the future conversations you have about this claim. You would love to have an adjuster's contact information. This is a person. So they say Betty Sue and her phone number is, you know, um, and they give you her phone number. A lot of times they will not have an adjuster's contact information yet in that first call. Uh, but you can ask for it and see if they have it. And if they do, that's super awesome. Um, and then when you can expect a call from the adjuster, I always say in claims information, in, uh, in claims experiences, you want to know when the company is supposed to do the next thing. And then if they don't do it at the time they say they were going to do it, that is when you contact them and say, hey, you said you would do, you know, so and so. Uh, at this time, it hasn't been done yet. I was just wondering how things are going. That way you don't come off as being really needy or any of that, but at the same time, you make sure that you're being taken care of like you should have. So this is the first opportunity to do this. When can you expect a call from the adjuster? If they say in the next 24 hours, don't call the company two hours from now and say, hey, I haven't gotten a call from the adjuster. What's going on? Give them the time that they said it would take. But don't give them more. You know, if it if it doesn't, that phone call doesn't come in the 24 hours that they say they're going to call in, then that's the time to give them a call and say, hey, uh, I need to uh, speak with the claims adjuster. And speaking of the claims adjuster, here is our claims adjuster. This individual is your new best friend. Um, and the reason why is this is the company's representative that makes claim decisions, decisions like whether certain things are covered, how much coverage there is for that thing. So this person is super important and super important relationship to take care of. And that's why I say, be nice to this person. It is amazing to me how many people are unkind to their claims adjusters. And the claims adjuster from the company calls me and says, hey, Jeremy, you know, this person is, is really being a jerk and I'm trying to help him out. But here's a situation, and, and I got to tell you, life is like this. I mean, this is a general life lesson, but you're never going to get the best from someone if you're treating them poorly. So, you know, be nice to this person. They have they have a huge role in the process. Okay, uh, this next slide that I'm going to throw up here is, I think, one of the most important pieces of this video. And, and this is why, because I think it creates a visual for you that really explains exactly how a claim happens. So you have a claim happen. I've got the, the house with the fire as the example here. There are two parallel paths that happen throughout the process. The first involves the insurance company. Your insurance company is obviously going to be involved if there's damage to your house. But the other one that you don't think about as much is the contractors. I mentioned the re remediation folks at the beginning of this video, and they may become your general contractor throughout the process. Or maybe you have someone you know who uh, does framing or does drywall or does you know different kinds of plumbing or whatever. Um, if you have those folks, you are usually, with most companies, allowed to hire whomever you want. But most of the time, the remediation folks play that role 
because it's easier and uh, it works out better. So there's two parallel paths, the, the, the insurance company and the contractor. So let's talk about the contractors first. What is their job? Well, their job is to do the work. So they are going to clean out the damage, fix everything that was wrong, and then rebuild whatever that is, whether that's putting carpet back down because it got wet or framing a room and drywalling it because it burned or whatever it is, the contractors that are local to you are going to be doing the actual work. Super important to understand because most people think it's the insurance company or you say, hey, why isn't the insurance company getting this done? It's because the contractors are the one that are actually doing the work. And the contractors are oftentimes what gets hung up if, you know, problems happen in the homeowner's insurance situation or a uh, home damage. You know, the contractors are the ones that, that are taking the longest because, you know, they have the work to do and they have to get the materials and the people and all that kind of stuff. The insurance company is also involved, but their role is fairly simple. They provide money to fix the damage that happened. That's their really their only role. You know, they're going to provide the money. The contractors are going to do the work and they're going to be the ones you're talking with the most. What color you want the paint, you know, all those kinds of things. The insurance company is going to provide the money. Two parallel paths are super important to understand. Okay, so what are the, some of the things that we need to think about while uh, the, the property claim is happening? Well, the first and, and most important is to dis determine if there is coverage, and I'll, and I'll describe that in a second. And the second is uh, if there is coverage on the policy, the insurance company is going to pay to make you whole, and I'll explain that. Let's talk about determining if there's coverage. Here's how it's going to work. The adjuster will likely visit your home and take photos. Sometimes they don't come out, but oftentimes they do. They're going to come out and take a look at what happened. They're going to ask you a lot of questions, ask you how it happened, when it happened, what started it, all those kinds of things. Finally, they are going to create a report that defines the cause of loss. The cause of loss is what drives insurance policies. What made it happen? What was the root problem that happened. If a tree fell, what made the tree fall? Did someone with a chainsaw, you know, knock that tree down? That's very different than if a windstorm came through and knocked that tree down. So we're looking all the way back to the very beginning, even if it's a domino effect of things that happened. What was the original thing that happened? And that's called the cause of loss. And why is the cause of loss so important? Well, when you look at the cause of loss, plus the terms of your insurance policy, which is different for all homeowners policies, you're going to get whether your loss is covered or not covered. And that's the heart of it all, right? Whether it's covered or not covered has everything to do with the cause of loss plus the terms of your insurance policy. And so many times the terms of your insurance policy is just this like real deep, you know, all these legalese stuff inside of your insurance policy. And so that's where some trust happens when you, you know, hire your insurance agent and, and choose a homeowner's policy. You're trusting them that uh, it's a solid policy and you're certainly going to find out uh, in these kinds of scenarios. So cause of loss plus policy, policy terms equals covered or not covered. Well, let's talk about how we figure out covered or not covered. There's basically three different things that could happen here. The adjuster could conclude that the entire loss is covered. That's the best case scenario. Uh, entire loss is covered. It could, uh, they could conclude that parts of the loss are covered. Uh, the best example is if uh, like a valve breaks in uh, your house and that valve was rusted out or something like that and water you know bursts everywhere a lot of times they'll say well you know what the valve was old and faulty so we're not going to replace that valve but we will replace all the damage that the water did after leaving the valve so if it's a you know ten thousand dollar claim they're going to pay nine thousand dollars and not pay the or that's a bad example but they you know sometimes they won't cover certain parts of the loss because of the the scenario um, and they will cover others. And then, and then finally, the loss is not covered. They determined that the cause of loss combined with the policy terms showed that the loss was not covered. So three different ways that things can go. Um, oftentimes, it's the entire loss. Sometimes parts are covered, parts aren't. And other times, it's, it's not covered at all. Okay, so how does the coverage work? Well, first of all, you have a deductible. You chose a deductible. Oftentimes on homeowners policies, it's, I suggest, $1,000. That's to keep your premium down. 
Um, some people have $2,500 or $5,000 deductibles. Other people have $500 deductibles. To me, uh, $1,000 deductible is proper. So you are going to pay the first $1,000 associated with this claim. Um, so if the claim is less than $1,000 or if the damage is less than $1,000, then they, there won't be a claim because you won't, uh, ha you won't have gotten to your deductible limit. Um, if it is above that, then you'll pay the 1000 bucks. The insurance company will pay the rest. Replacement cost versus ACV. Lots of videos out there about this. I've created a couple. Um, I'm not going to get into big details on it, but basically you want a replacement cost policy. This is going to replace things properly. ACV is going to subtract for depreciation. So everything that needs to be replaced, the insurance company is not going to be giving you the complete amount of money that you need to replace that. So hopefully you have a replacement cost policy and not an ACV policy. If you want to know more information about that, check out the other videos on our channel. And finally, as I mentioned before, pay to make you whole. The insurance company is going to pay to replace the things that you lost. If that means rebuilding your house completely, then we're going to rebuild your house completely up to the policy limits. If you have a policy that insures you for $180,000 and you're, it's going to cost $250,000 to replace your house, Lots of insurance policies stop at that 180. You're going to have to pay the extra 70 to get your house totally, completely rebuilt. Now, many, many solid policies have built-in systems to help deal with that um, guaranteed replacement cost or extended replacement cost. Um, but as best we can, we're going to pay you make, to make you whole up to the policy's limits. We're not going to pay, pay more than uh, your policy provided for you in general, um, but we're going to pay to make you whole. Okay, so what things are covered? Just a quick reminder, your house is covered, your stuff is covered, the things inside your house, um, with some limitations, including jewelry, furs, firearms, money, uh, personal property has lots of rules around it, but um, in general, your stuff is covered. Other structures, this could be a pool, uh, your detached garage, things of that nature. And finally, uh, oftentimes people don't think about this, but we're going to pay to put you in a hotel for a period of time or a long-term living situation if we're completely rebuilding your house. So additional living expenses or loss of use is paid by your insurance policy oftentimes as well. So those four things are what are going to be covered in a property claim. Okay, that was quick. Didn't get too deep and dirty into the details, but gave you at least a basic understanding. We covered property versus liability. Property coverage is for your stuff. Liability coverage is for bad things that happen to other people because of you. We talked about what to do first. Make sure you call uh, 911. Stop the problem if you can. And finally, don't admit fault. Um, claims adjuster, your best friend in this process, the person who will be making decisions at the insurance company about whether coverage is there or not there, what kinds of coverage exists, how payments get made, they cut the checks, this person is important, so be nice to them. And how a claim goes down, I described uh, different coverages and how you can see them, reminded you about your deductible, and talked a little bit about what things are covered. Uh, wanted to tell you real quickly about other Shine videos, our new home buyer's guide. If you ha are buying a new home, a uh, super, super valuable video, very similar to this one in the way it's structured, um, but really tells you a lot about the new home buyer's process. And uh, I definitely suggest that video. If you've never heard of a personal liability umbrella, additional liability coverage above and beyond the liability coverage on your home and auto policy, uh, this video will really help you with that. And finally, if you're into some funny stuff, uh, our writing lawnmower fails video, I think it's pretty funny. Um, some people making pretty poor decisions um, with riding lawnmowers. And finally, what's next? As always, the last step in our videos is to one, please, if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We create tons of great videos just like this one. Our attempt is truly to help you understand how insurance works or like with the new home buyer's guide, uh, just to really educate you about something uh, financial or with the, the lawnmower riding lawnmower fails just to try and be funny and have a good time. So we, we try and enjoy, enjoy ourselves on our channel here and we'd love for you to be a part of it. Um, finally, if you could share this information with your social media world, whether I mean that means tweeting a link to this video or liking uh, on Facebook our, our, our Facebook um, 
channel, subscribing to that, whatever your channel is over there on Facebook. Um, anything that you can do to share this information. I would say good information is only great when you share it with others. If you feel like this video did that for you, please go ahead and share it with other folks so they can experience it as well. Until the next time, I hope you got a whole bunch of information out of this video. I hope it didn't move too quickly. If you have questions, please throw them down in the comments section. I answer every question that I see on there, and uh, I'm happy to answer yours. If you thought this video was the worst thing you've ever seen in your whole life, I hope you'll uh, put that down in the comments section as well, along with sharing why you thought it was that way so that I can make the next one even better. Okay, until the next time, have a wonderful day.